Aloha everyone, my name is Sarah Stevens and I'm here to talk to you about foraging for wild edibles here in Hawaii and how you can use those ingredients in cocktails. I've always been a huge outdoor enthusiast and so when I moved here about five years ago I started hiking all the time, sometimes five, six times per week, um, and I started wondering about all the interesting fruits and nuts and flowers and plants I was finding. Um, so I started researching what they were and identifying the plants and using what I would find in cocktails. So. Um, you can find me on Instagram as Foraging for Cocktails if you'd like to check out a little bit what I do. Um, otherwise, uh, we're just going to drive up panelists today, maybe go on a couple trails, see what we can find, and I'm going to talk about how you can use them in your cocktails. So here we are on Tantalus Mountain, overlooking Honolulu City. So first up, I see a fiddlewood tree. These are super prominent for landscaping in Honolulu, so you might see them around the city or find the little blackberries on the ground after they ripen. On that note, the black ones are going to be the ripe ones and the ones that are ready to eat. Um, they have a sweet tobacco-like flavor, so they work great in simple syrups and they pair really well with whiskey or other dark spirits. This is a cocktail I made recently with Fiddlewood. It's got Port Eskeg Isla Scotch Whiskey, Fiddlewood Simple Syrup, and a homemade Spice Mountain Apple Liqueur. Moving on. So alongside of the road here, I see some butterfly ginger blossom. Butterfly ginger blossom is one of my favorite ingredients to work with. It's got a beautiful, creamy, floral, fragrant scent with just that hint of delicate ginger. So far, I think I've found around nine different species of ginger on Oahu. Uh, this is one of my favorites and also probably the easiest to find. Uh, not only are the blossoms edible, but also the leaves and the roots as well. The blossoms I've used in a liqueur, a simple syrup, and you can also distill them in a hydrosol as well or, or flower water. There's not a lot of use for the leaves other than making a tea or possibly a garnish. Um, and then the roots you would use just as you would culinary ginger. And then you can of course use the blossoms as a garnish as well. I've used butterfly ginger blossom in a lot of cocktails, so this is just an example, but this is featuring Kohana Kea, of course, um, a homemade butterfly ginger blossom liqueur, homemade strawberry guava simple syrup, uh, Scrappy's lavender bitters, and lemon juice, and of course, clear ice from Ice Cube Hawaii. And moving on, this is one of my favorite secret spots to try to find avocado, and no, I'm not telling you where it is. Yep, got one already. Oh, and here's another one right nearby. Two perfect avocados. Moving on down the road, um, headed to Tantalus Arboretum Trail. This is a lesser known trail, but there's actually quite a few things that grow on it. And right away, we've got another avocado. So this is good so I can talk about the uses for avocado and cocktails. So talking about avocado and cocktails could be a whole nother seminar, but um, you've probably heard of avocado margaritas. Um, one thing I do want to say is that avocados tend to work really well with lactic acid instead of citric acid. If you use citric acid, they tend to come out a little sour. So you want to use things like milk, coconut milk, almond milk, and that tends to bring out the creaminess of the avocado. And this is how many avocados I found on Tantalus today. You may notice that I picked up some seeds as well. The seeds are actually edible as long as you don't consume them in mass quantities, and uh, they can be used to make an orgeat that has a beautiful woody flavor. This right here is a great example of how you can use avocado in a cocktail. Uh, this is just an avocado pina colada, made the same exact way as you would a normal pina colada, but with half an avocado thrown in the blender. And now we're headed a little further down Tantalus Arboretum Trail. Uh, and right away we've got a macadamia nut. Macadamia nuts are associated with Hawaii, but they're actually invasive and brought to us from Australia. Um, however, they do make a beautiful orgeat, as you probably know. 
And next we'll head over to Pu'u'ohia Trail. This uh, leads to the top of Tantalus Mountain and is one of my favorite foraging trails on Oahu. And see right away, we've got another avocado. You guys sick of these things yet? Right nearby, we've got some honohono grass. Um, this doesn't have much use in a cocktail. It's just a sweet leafy green, but as you can see, it might make a cute little garnish if you'd like. This is a good time of year because not only is it avocado season, but it's also guava season. I find guava is a bit hard to work with because of the seeds. Um, they look super juicy and delicious, but um, in terms of making simple syrups and liqueurs and stuff like that, um, it's really hard to find strain out the seeds and you actually don't get that much juice from it. Instead of making a simple syrup or a liqueur, um, I find it's just easier to chuck the guava into a cocktail and shake it in there um, with the rest of the ingredients and you'll get the flavor a lot more clearly than you would if you made something out of it. But I tend to just like to eat them on the trail as I go. And of course it's butterfly ginger blossom season as well, so we've got more of that. And just outside Pu'u'ohia Trail, um, just right near the parking lot, we've got a kukui nut tree. Um, just inside of it right now. Uh, kukui nuts are pretty hard to work with, not gonna lie, it requires a lot of patience. Um, but they can be really delicious if you make them into an orjat or a liqueur. Um, so the reason they're hard to work with is because they have several layers and most of them are hard to get into. So this very outer layer that you see here, um, it's super hard. You have to cut it open with a knife and then once you get inside there, there's another outer shell which isn't too hard to get off. Um, after that, you do have to roast them for a couple hours at 425 degrees. They are quite poisonous. Um, they won't kill you, but they will relieve constipation quite quickly. So. Uh, just keep in mind that roasting them is really important during this process. Um, after you roast them, you do have to crack them open. I use a hammer, some people use a rock, but it is extremely difficult and you're not going to get that much volume from these few nuts that you are cracking open in this way. After you do that, um, they should be ready to go. Um, and then you can you can make an orjat. I've made a liqueur out of it, but I, I feel like orjat is definitely the way to go. And these are the blossoms, so if you do make an orja out of the kukui nuts, consider using the blossoms instead of orange blossom water for that. I won't get into this one because it's got kind of a lot of crazy ingredients in it, but it does have the kukui nut liqueur in it as well, just to give you an example. A little further up the road, we've got some shell ginger here. This is also known as false cardamom. Um, during a different flowering season, you might see something that resembles cardamom, and yes, it is edible, and you can use it in a very similar way as cardamom. Um, other than that, the roots are not edible on this one, but the leaves definitely are, and they kind of have that cardamom flavor if you want to make a tea out of them. Other than that, we've got the flower petals here, which are really beautiful. Just this part can be used as a garnish. Or, as you can see, the individual flower petals make a really beautiful garnish as well. Um, you just want to peel away the other parts of the flower and scrape off the pollen like so, or you can just run it under water. Um, the pollen isn't edible, so that's why getting the pollen off is important here, but as you can see, beautiful. And this is an example of a tamarind cocktail I made utilizing the shell ginger blossoms. So, there are over 200 species of hibiscus, and six of them are actually native to Hawaii. This is how this is one of the six native varieties of hibiscus. This doesn't have much use other than a garnish, but as you can see, they're really gorgeous. And the cool thing about these flowers is they start out at that bright yellow color early in the morning. And as it gets later in the day, they turn this beautiful dark reddish orange color. This is another variety of hibiscus. Uh, this one is not native to Hawaii. Um, which is good because we try to use more invasive plants rather than native plants, right? Um, but as you can see, it's really beautiful, can be used as a garnish, not just the whole flower, but consider using the individual petals as well. And now we're starting to drive down Tantalus. Um, just gonna check a few more spots along the way.
And once again, not gonna tell you where it is, but this is my favorite spot to find guava. Since I already talked about how to use guava in a cocktail, um, I wanna take a minute to talk about sustainability. Um, just because we're foraging doesn't necessarily mean that it's sustainable. Um, we do wanna educate ourselves not only on plant identification, but also on the degree of invasiveness or nativeness of the plant. Um, we don't wanna run around just using native plants that might be rare and might be endangered. So um, just be sure to research your plants and try to use invasive plants whenever possible so that we're consuming them and using them so they don't further destroy the land. And that concludes our drive up Tantalus. Thank you for tuning in guys and please join me for a live Q&A after this and feel free to ask me anything you want about foraging.